right now we're going to finish up here with some parallel and perpendicular lines and we're also going to go ahead and review standard form as well because that's another form of an equation that you should be pretty uh, familiar with. Alright, so just to review here we've got parallel lines. There's your geometric um, um, notation for parallel. Alright, perpendicular lines, your geometric notation for that as well. Alright, now when we've got parallel lines we all know that they have the same slopes. All right, but if they're going to be different lines and parallel to each other, then they've got to have that different y-intercept. All right, the thing to remember about your perpendicular lines is that they are negative reciprocal slopes. All right, and so an example of that might be if you had one line and it had a slope of two-thirds, the negative reciprocal would be the opposite sign, so negative, and then flipped around, which would be three-halves. So there would be your slopes of two lines which were perpendicular to each other. All right, now, uh, we did, all right, earlier in the block, we did um, point-slope form, and we did slope-intercept form, reviewed those. All right, standard form is another one that you have done pretty, um, worked pretty much with in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. You've got an AX plus a BY equals a C. Again, I color-coded this, all right, for the where the numbers are going to go. Um, now, depending on uh, who your Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 teacher was, you uh, might have just been told to solve for y and put it in slope-intercept form, and then from there you could find the slope and find the y-intercept. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you can also do this a little bit quicker, though. You can memorize some formulas, all right? If you think about um, your x-intercept, well, when your x-intercept, when you're finding an x-intercept, y equals 0. So that makes this term fall out. So then I could do a formula of C over A is going to give me the x-intercept. I could do the same thing. So when I want the y-intercept, x is 0. So that would basically knock this term out, which then means the y-intercept would be C over B. All right. Um, if I were to solve this as a literal equation and solve for y, then I would discover that my slope is a negative a over b. All right, so these formulas that I'm about ready to give you here um, are not just randomly generated that you can algebraically go through and show where they all come from. All right, but helpful hints on this one, your x-intercept can be found with c over a, your y-intercept can be found with c over b, and then that slope can be found with a negative a over b. All right, now, granted, yes, that would be three formulas that you would have to memorize, all right, but conceptually, if you understand what an x-intercept is, what a y-intercept is, all right, then it, it's pretty straightforward on where this is going to come from. Um, I did say that, you know, we could solve this equation as a literal equation and then see that our slope is negative a over b, so let's go ahead and take a few minutes because it's not going to take very long to do that. So if I were to take this equation right here and I wanted to solve it for y, put it in that slope-intercept form, what would I do? I would subtract the AX from both sides of the equation, so I'd have a BY is equal to, all right, now if I want to put it in slope-intercept form, I'm going to choose to put that AX in front as opposed to on the right-hand side of that C, so minus AX plus C, all right, and then if I go through and divide that entire equation by the coefficient in front of Y or divide by B, divide by B, divide by B, divide by B, the B's cross out right here, that leaves us with a Y equals a negative A over B X plus C over B. All right, so then hopefully you can see, ooh, the Y intercept is C over B, all right, and the slope is negative A over B. All right, so that's just a little added bonus. You can literally prove where those formulas come from or algebraically show where those formulas come from. All right, so now with uh, one more type of form here, we've got all three forms that we've been looking at, and now they're just going to ask you a variety of different questions about parallel and perpendicular lines. You can see standard form, point, slope form, and slope intercept form in all of them. So we'll do a couple of examples. Like I said, this should still be review, all right, from Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, so this should go pretty smooth. All right, so let's say they tell you to write the equation in point slope form and slope intercept form
of the line parallel to y equals 2 thirds x minus 4 and passes through the point 6, 3. All right, so they've given you a double task, all right, in two different forms. We've got to write two different equations. They've identified parallel. They've given you parallel to what? Parallel to an equation and also passes through this. All right, so point slope form, which probably is going to be our first one because what? It's easy to find a slope and a point. So if we always start with that point slope form, that's going to be the easiest way to go. Then we also are going to have to rewrite that into slope intercept form. We definitely need it to be parallel to this equation right here. And I can real easily find my slope of that line because it's in slope intercept form. All right. And they've given us the point that it has to go through. All right. So there's lots of information in there. All right. Let's do one thing at a time here. If I want parallel line to this line, I have to have the same slope. All right, we already said slope's two-thirds there. So I have a slope and a point. So that's why I'm going to do point-slope form first. Okay, so point-slope form. I'm going to use the same slope, which is two-thirds, and I'm going to use the point that they want us to go through right there, 6, 3. So point-slope form, we ought to be able to write straight away y minus 3 is equal to, plug in the slope, 2 thirds, and then x minus 6. All right, pretty straightforward there. All right, once you have that answer, then now you can give them the second answer of slope-intercept form. All right, so slope-intercept form. So I'm going to start with this. I'll rewrite y minus 3 is equal to 2 thirds x minus 6. All right, so we're going to what? We're going to distribute first. So we'll have a y minus 3 is equal to a 2 thirds x. All right, hopefully we can take that 2 thirds and multiply by 6 in our head pretty easy. All right, 6 divided by 3 is 2 times the 2 on top is going to be a 4, so we'll have a minus 4. All right, going ahead and adding 3 to both sides. Then we're going to have a y equals a 2 thirds x minus 1. And then there we've got our slope intercept form. All right, so again, this is just one example. All right, they could have asked for a variety of different forms. They might have given this equation to you in standard form. They might have given it to you in point slope form. You would have to then find the slope. All right, parallel means you're always going to use the same slope of the line that they give to you. All right, and then once you find that slope, they're probably going to give you another point. That's why it's always good to start with point slope form because you know the slope and you know a point. All right, um, let's do one more just to make sure that we have this concept down pat. All right, let's see if we can do something a little bit different. How about if um, they ask for more information than just the parallel and perpendicular? All right, let's say they say find the slope x-intercept and y-intercept Then write the equation in point slope form okay so nothing about parallel and perpendicular let's just say they are wanting you to find the slope the x-intercept, the y-intercept, then write the equation in point-slope form, and they're going to give you, say, a 2x plus a 5y is equal to a 10. All right, and then uh, let's say they also give you a point that is on this line, let's say negative 4, 1. All right, so first of all, you need to recognize what form the equation is in. All right, it is in standard form. All 
All right, now, if you use the shortcuts of those uh, formulas that I gave you earlier, this would be your AX, this would be your BY, and this would be your C, okay? I could easily rewrite this into slope-intercept form, form and find slope and Y-intercept, and then I would still have to algebraically find that X-intercept, okay? So the formulas will be quicker, I think, in the long run. All right, so if I want to find the X-intercept, that's the formula C over A, all right, and in this case, 10 over 2 divides out really easily. That's going to be a 5. With it being an x-intercept, we really should write it as an ordered pair because an x-intercept is the point at which the graph crosses the x-axis. So that would be 5, 0. All right, if I'm going to do the y-intercept, all right, keeping in mind what? When the x-coordinate is 0, all right, then we can find our y-intercept. All right, so the formula there would be the C over B. Again, divides out nice. 10 over 5 is going to give me a 2. Again, should be written as an ordered pair, so 0, 2. All right, last would be the slope using that formula of negative A over B. All right, so my A is 2, so it's going to be a negative 2 over a 5, and then I don't have to reduce or do anything to that. I have just a negative 2 fifths there for my slope. All right, now let's say I want point slope form. All right, so let's do that next. Point slope form. All right, now technically you can use any point. All right, yes, this is a point, this is a point, this is a point as well. All right, they gave you this point, so it's kind of indicating they really want you to use that point, but I need at least a slope, and I need a point. So I'm going to choose the point that they gave me, and then write it with that one. So we'll do a y minus 1 is equal to our slope, which is negative 2 fifths, and then an x, remembering minus a negative 4, would be plus 4. All right, so then there is our slope-intercept form. All right, so just because you are in the, equa uh, in the section or doing the problems that are dealing with parallel and perpendicular lines, not every question is going to ask you to do that. But just going to, this is just an overall general review of linear functions, the three forms of our linear equations, and then being able to do that parallel and perpendicular one. Um, I've only done an example of parallel. Let's go ahead and do an example of perpendicular as well. Okay, so on this one, let's say they say write an equation. I'm going to go back to abbreviating a little bit here. In, let's say, point slope form. That is perpendicular. Two y equals negative one fifth x plus six and goes through the point four negative two. All right, so again, keeping in mind, I did not have to do slope intercept form here. It could have been standard form, it could have been point slope form here. All right, regardless of the type right here, you got to be able to find that slope. All right, you got to know, am I doing parallel, perpendicular, what form do they want the answer in, and then there's the point that it goes through. All right, so let's identify all that again. Perpendicular here. We know the slope right here. I'm trying to come up with point slope form, which is what I'm going to have. I'm going to have a point, and then I'm going to have to figure out which slope I'm going to use. All right, so real easily, I have a slope of negative one-fifth, okay? So if I want a perpendicular line, I'm going to use the negative reciprocal. So I'm going to use the opposite of what I see and flip it around. So I'm going to use five as my slope. All right, negative reciprocals means the opposite sign and flip it around. All right, so I've got a slope and I've got a point. So now I can go y opposite sign because minus a negative would be plus 2 is equal to 
the perpendicular slope, 5, and then x minus the 4. Okay, so again, that one was straightforward and only asked you to do one thing. They didn't ask you to rearrange or anything into a different form. From here, I could ask you to write it into standard form. I could ask you to write it into slope-intercept form. Okay, so again, um, if we need to see more examples, I can do them. How are we doing? Head nods. That's good. All right, so we should be good then. Um, let's go ahead and use the rest of the period then to work on the Math Excel assignment. And if you've got questions, be sure and come up and ask.